There we go. One on the Texas rig. Whoa. All right, well, there's a look at what I'm throwing. That's some of the dual injections that I made, kind of a light brown-ish bottom, kind of a June bug top. Whew, what is happening, fish and friends? Welcome to another episode. I am absolutely covered in sweat. I picked one of the hottest days of the year to do this. It's like 100 here uh, in Iowa today. Super humid, but I had to get out to the garage to make some baits. So what we're talking about today, the new hatchet craw from Do It Molds. You saw in the beginning, caught some fish on it, just made up a few, made a bunch the other day, got to fish them. We got all this to talk about. First, let's go out and make a few. All right, out in the garage, I'm going to cut up some of this chartreuse green. This is a remelt, and this is a look at the new mold, the hatchet craw from Do It Molds, four cavity mold, nice and shiny. And here's a close up of the claws. Look at those, gonna have a ton of flap on them, nice wedge at the end of it. Good looking little mold here. Now, as I get this warmed up, got it close to 360 with the remelt, we should be good. Go ahead and start shooting some of these in there and always remember to top it off because uh, as it cools, it's gonna kind of suck some of that plastic down in. Take my excess, put that back in the Pyrex and we're ready to go. All right, as we open up the mold here, you can see these shot nice and clean, perfect green color. I love the claws on there. You can see those clubs really have a bunch of flap in action. Cut the head off of these because I'm going to make the head and claws one color and the body a different color. So I'm going to shoot some more of these green ones. Rock out because I know this is going to be a voiceover and I forgot I'm a little bit too old to do that. So let's get on with it. Drink some milk here to cool down. I'm kidding. It's plastisol. This is going to be the color for our body and maybe this one. Blue, nah, it's not what I'm looking for. Junebug, I already used too much purple. Amber, this is a pretty color. Reminds me of a girl I used to know. Oof, not that one. How about this? What is this one? Ooh, Midnight Blue. That's one I've never used. Hmm, Keeper. Next, we've got to get the head pieces added into the mold. When you put these in here, you have to be really careful that you get every little claw piece, all the antennas, everything put in there and lined up because if there's any gap, uh, when you put the mold together and shoot the plastisol, there's a gap, it'll have a space and it won't shoot nice and pretty. Now, to get our blue body color mixed up here, that is, that's definitely blue looking, maybe a little too blue. I've got an idea. Add more blue. It should make it darker for us here. That's darker, but I want to dark it up even more. So add a couple different sizes of uh, black glitter here. I've added a one, which is a small 0 .1, 0 0.015 and a larger 0 0.040. And that's, that's dark, maybe a bit too dark. I don't know. We'll see once we actually get these shot because when you uh, warm this up to get it up to temperature, make sure you do that in 30 second intervals. You can see there that uh, it's, it's not as dark as I thought. I went ahead and shot it in there and took a closer look after I got this ready and it's definitely dark. I want to make it a little bit better and I've got, I've got an idea. We had purple Florida grape. This should make it good. Add just maybe one little small drop there and oh, look at that. A dark, deep blue, purple, closer look. This almost looks like a color and strike king that I absolutely love. I think we might be onto something here. So last two body cavities, I'm going to go ahead and put this new special moonlight Debo purple in here. Uh, oh my gosh, look at that color. That is extraordinary. All right, I'm excited to get this baby popped open. Hopefully they turned out all right. And uh, did it work? Ooh, they look pretty darn nice. A light colored chartreuse green head. You can't do that if you were to just dip this dark purpley blue and chartreuse lighter color head is awesome to do this with a darker colored body all right now that we got these all made up let's take a look at the colors a little bit closer so this is the uh, the two-tone that i did where i cut off the head you can see some of these have a little bit of imperfections and i saved one here to talk about just that if you pour some and the top of it is like messed up and you're like oh darn i have to throw this whole thing out these are perfect ones to take and cut that head off and do a two-tone like this where the head or even the claws you could cut just the claws off of this um, and put them in there but where it's a different color um, than the stuff that you shoot on top of it, these are perfect ones where the top of it doesn't quite mold as well. I probably got some uh, plastic stuck in there and it hardened before when I you know, poured over the top of it to get that down in there. But it's good to right there. And actually, you can take this off and I'll show you what I use these for because some of them I pour it like that and uh, tear them off there anyway. So we'll save this piece. Now, speaking of that purple, these turned out amazing. Look at that, the purple in the claws. You know what this reminds me of? MM Moonlight. If you go look at the Strike King Rage Craws, and the MM Moonlight color, I think it is the best color, one of the best colors in the lineup. There's a sub here. One of the best colors in the lineup, and nobody ever talks about it. I think it's Mark, Minde, Mark Mendez's color, um, which is absolutely amazing. One of my favorites, and this turned out pretty dang close to it. So it's like a, a Debo's 
Moonlight spinoff of that, but I'm super happy with these. And I don't know if I mentioned, but uh, I poured some extra ones of these. Look at that. Oh, those look pretty. There will be a giveaway at the end. Stay till the end to find out, but I got to hook you all up because I've got uh, a bunch of extras here. These are a whole ton of Bushy Beetles, ton of little Ned Rigs that I did, some Okeechobee Craw, Purple, Junebug, and even a whole bunch of stick baits that I had. All these were sitting on top of my microwave. I've got uh, baits that I've made out the, uh, the Yin Yang, so I'm going to give some of these away, a bunch of packs. This is another color I made the other day, kind of a light brown with a, a blue highlight, some blue flake in it. This one actually turned out really neat. This was one of my favorites, one that I wasn't expecting to be cool, and I'm like, ooh, I need more of those. And you can see the differences here. I took that same color, darkened it up with some green pumpkin and got some of these out of it. This is a really good natural do-it-all color. Here's some more of those in the hog sauce. Now I poured some of these, which if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen these. Kind of my spinoff on peanut butter and jelly. It was like a June bug. And these are so greasy because I put some of their hog sauce on it, the do it scent. And ooh man, it smells more like hog death. I don't know, but uh, a dark brown. This is, a, I think they call it green pumpkin brown or something for the brown sign and then some June bug with like a green highlight in it for the, the uh, grape jelly PBJ side. These turn out really neat. That's when you use a dual injector. You can see the two different colors there. Top is a different color than the bottom. Another really fun way. I didn't shoot any of these for you, but I've done that in past videos. Looked really neat. And there's the rest of the other color. Now I also, before I darkened it up, I added some blue highlight to some of them so you can see the difference there. Look at how that has like a blue highlight iridescence to it. Some really neat colors you can make on your own. Oh, and I forgot just to show you the difference. I did some uh, Florida grape or June bug. I forget which one this is, just purple the other day. And you can see uh, how that's different from this dark purple. But the first way you could rig it, this is another one. You'll see a new video on this because there's a ton of different ways to use these, but a darter head. If you're just popping these in and around grass, Darter head is actually meant to be used as a vertical jigging technique, like a Demiki rig. So it's not really going to work with this. It's going to be back heavy. But if you're just popping this and shooting this through grass, pulling it through as a bank angler, a little pointy head like that is just going to act like a swim jig. So just a different way to use your craw instead of a Texas rig. Uh, you could just fish it like this and it stays pegged right there for you all in one. A little bit lighter wire hook. Ooh, that looks pretty neat. Speaking of a Texas rig, that's exactly how I was using it the other night. Now, not with this. I would definitely use uh, an EWG hook for this. This is just a rod I happen to have next to me on my uh, rod stand here. Rig that up like so. You can text pose the hook just on the side of it, and you've got a perfect little weedless presentation there. That's exactly what I was fishing the other day. Caught some on it. Uh, caught some while I was not recording like a big dummy, but just a Texas rig like this. I mean, this is one of the easiest ways to fish a crawl. Awesome little way to catch some fish in and around brush right now in the summer when those fish are literally nose up to brush. And it's compact enough for when they're in there, you can get that in and around wood. You know, maybe brush, I might go to something a little bit more slimmer, but around most wood, you can throw this in and around that just like that peg it and uh, you've got a great little way to attack bass in the wood. Now, I remember that crowd that didn't turn out 100%. I tore it off there. That's why I was tearing these off the other day. Probably one of the uh, top ways next to a Texas rig to use a little crawl like this. Has a jig trailer and this thing on a little finesse jig. Yes, that is a Debo made custom. My uh, purple June buggy looking color there. Throw some of those around some wood. Nice dark black purple color like that June bug does awesome in dirty stained water. Just gives a really good outline. You can see just how those claws get just enough out behind it. You've got enough of the, the headpiece there, you know, what's really thick to get into a hook like that. And it looks awesome on a little finesse jig. I was throwing these and uh, caught a couple the other day too, but that's gonna be another video. So uh, hold your pants on, but there we go as a jig trailer. And uh, another one that I also made is the Ned rig. Yes, this is another one from Do It, the Midwest EWG Finesse Ned. I don't know what the heck they call it. It's a EWG Ned rig. And for a bank angler, this is one of the few times I can actually say game changer and mean it, but a Ned EWG like this, fishing it from the bank has truly been a game changer for me. I get hung up about a thousand times less. You can throw this around rock, you can throw it around wood and the hook is text posed in there just like you're throwing a Texas rig. So you've got this, that's I think like candy purple or something like that that I made up. A little purple rig like that. I love purple around here in the Midwest. Really once it gets down to the deeper water, it probably looks like a brown or something. I know colors kind of change, but I have a ton of confidence in purple like that and it's a perfect size to throw on a Ned rig. Now I actually beefed up my hooks. I modified my, uh, my Ned rig head. I'll put that at the end of the video, but my Ned rig head, I modified it just a little bit to put a, uh, a two-out hook on it, a little heavier, 
Um, you can kind of mess with doing that. But there's a ton of other ways you could fish these. You could put on a free rig. You could do the rage rig, which is just a belly weighted swim bait hook like you'd put on a, you know, a paddle tail with the weight down here. And it allows the craw to fall more horizontally instead of vertically. Kind of a sneaky way to do it. But a ton of different ways you could rig these. How would you use these craws? Comment below because you want to drop a comment. That's how you're going to win. One of these, I'm going to pick a random comment and uh, throw in a ton of stick baits. Some Debo Ned rigs. Old Bushy Beetles and yes, some of the brand new Hatchet Crawls from Do It. Love, love the Do It stuff. They are an Iowa company. Proud to work with them. Awesome team. And it's fun because you get to make all your own stuff that actually catches fish. So, ton of fun. Comment below and let me know how you would be rigging these. And what's one of your favorite colors? You know, I just did kind of a sample here. Some light browns, dark browns, PBJ. This actually has a green highlight to it if you can see that. Some of them I did with green, some I did with blue, but a bunch of different ways. What is your favorite color craw to throw? You know, an all black, as boring as it is, probably one of the best colors. It makes a silhouette in dark water, makes a silhouette in clear water, doesn't matter. Uh, but you know, it's kind of boring. I think it's one of those colors that doesn't sell. For me, uh, I'm going with a dark purple because it looks sexy. And listen, I love to hear feedback from all of you. So if there's another type of soft plastic or another one of the jigs uh, heads or the swim bait heads that y'all want me to do next, comment below and let me know as well. But that's the new hatchet craw. Ton of fun messing with it. I'm going to have some more videos fishing it soon. One is going to be quite a big surprise where I'm fishing this because it's a complete first for me. Not the plastic, but something else. But anyway, listen, today's subscribe fishing friend. Well, I'm going with old Mr. Steve Smith there. He just recently commented. Steve Smith, thank you. Everybody who continues to watch and let me know that they like the videos means a ton to me. I should probably shut up my, my eyeglasses, doctor. I forgot my glasses today. Uh, I left them when I was working the shop. But anyway, love you all. Again, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you had fun with this one. And until uh, next time.